Hello everyone, it's Detrina from the Alluring Bee Boutique and the Bee Mat. Hope you're having a fantastic um, day today. I wanted to do a quick video and show you guys, um, teach you guys how to do pearl knotting the way that I do it. So here's the necklace that I just made for my daughter. And if you look closely, you can see my little knots in between each pearl. And I did a pretty good job on this one, and it came out really, really nice. She wanted a set uh, made, and these are Swarovski's 10 millimeter, the cream rose pearls. And here's the little pair of earrings. I also got the half drilled uh, 8 millimeter Swarovski's, and I made a little pair of post earrings to match her necklace for her. And it just came out really beautiful. I made this clasp portion myself with um, gold filled wire 12 gauge. And it looks super nice. And on the ends here I used um, I used all gold fill findings. I had ordered some little bead caps and the wire guardians. Now most of the videos I've watched people are using um, the bullion. It's called bullion. And what it is is like a little coil of metal that you can string on over to your bead silk and when you loop around and back through your pearl it creates a protective barrier between the clasp and the silk thread um, I couldn't find any in gold filled and all I could find was brass so I didn't want to use brass with these beautiful gold filled findings so I didn't want to use brass with the gold fill findings, so I went ahead and ordered the gold filled um, Horseshoe Guardian wire protectors, and it came out looking really super nice and very professional looking, and it still protects the thread in exactly the same way that the bullion would work. That's what we're going to get into, and I'm going to go ahead and put this away and get the materials out for today's video. Okay, so I've got my materials laid out here, and... Um, the set I'm going to be working on is going to have a bracelet, a necklace, and a pair of earrings. And this is for um, a, the, one of my daughter's friends from work. Her name is Katie. And the very first thing I pearl knotted was she had a, a pearl necklace of Swarovski's. I think they were like 12 millimeter pearls and they wore that beautiful pearlescent um green color so she went she had broken it and um i repaired it for her and i learned to pearl knot by doing that project and repairing her necklace so then when i sent it back that's when my daughter said oh well i want this i want a pearl necklace and everything and so katie also wanted another set and she wanted it in the dark gray so these are the Swarovskis, the beautiful dark gray pearls um i figured my length um by how many beads I would need by just checking a beading chart on how many beads per inch that the um, 10 millimeter Swarovski pearls come out to. She wants a 19 inch necklace in an 8 inch bracelet and she also wants a pair of earrings. So we'll talk about the earrings really quick first. So in one of my videos I've shown you guys how to make these beautiful fancy oval ear wires and there's a pair that I had made myself out of my gold filled beautiful little wire. And this was the um, half round wire and half hard wire. So once they were made, they're really nice and um, firm. I didn't really have to do much in the way of hardening, uh, doing wire hardening on them. And they came out really nice. And in another video, I've showed you guys how to make the ball head pins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 22 gauge round go fill wire and I'm going to make bald head pins but once I run the pearl on I'm going to do a simple loop at the top to connect them to my ear wires like that. So I'm going to show you guys I'm going to work on the bracelet today but I ordered uh, just a simple little lobster claw gold fill clasp one for the necklace and one for her bracelet. I ordered four of the little bead caps in gold fill and I'll just a moment and I'll tell you what size these are and they don't have to be huge it, you can get bigger bead caps I just wanted an elegant little touch um, and an elegant way to finish off each strand for the bracelet and for the bracelet so I just ordered the smaller ones because I didn't want to overpower the beautiful beads at the end of my beadwork 
So my little bead caps um, are six millimeter Gofield bead caps. And I've got four four millimeter Gofield horseshoe wire guardians. I'll use two on the necklace, <coughs> excuse me, and two on the bracelet. And then I also have these six millimeter Gofield soldered closed jump rings. <coughs> Pardon me, my allergies are really bad. I'm really too sorry about that. I didn't make these ones. I just went ahead and ordered these ones. And those are what I'm going to be using to connect to my lobster claws. Now, I, like I said, I had to figure out by beads per inch <coughs> as to how many of these um, Swarovski pearls I would need to make a bracelet and a necklace. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm just showing you a demonstration. I didn't actually do it this way. I just looked at a chart that I found on Fire Mountain Gems. And to um, for these 10 millimeter pearls, one inch equals 2.54 of your pearls. So I took that information, 2.54, and I times that times 19 for the to determine the length for her necklace, how many beads I would need for her necklace. And I also um, times it out times 8 inches, 2.54 times 8 inches, to determine how many pearls I would need for the bracelet as well. I added those two together, and I came out with 65 beads. I went ahead and ordered 67 beads because I do need two for her earrings. She wants a single dangle drop on each one of her earrings. So that's how I determined the amount of beads that I would need for my project. And then also, uh, you are also going to need some silk thread. Now, this is Griffin Silk. And it comes in a number of sizes. Uh, what you're looking for when you purchase the silk is not necessarily this number here, but what you want to look for is the, in the diameter of the thread. So this is 0 0.70 millimeters in diameter, and that's the number six. All right, so the inside diameter of a Swarovski 10 millimeter pearl is 0.8 millimeters. So I ordered the 0.7 thread because at a couple of places in the project you will have to pass through a couple of your pearls two times. So that's how I determined that I wanted to use this larger um, 7 millimeter thread so that I only have to tie one knot in between each pearl so I don't run the risk of the pearl the whole of the pearl slipping down onto one of the knots and causing the beads to rub together, if that makes sense. So I determined how much, what size of diameter I needed for my silk thread based on the inside diameter hole size of the pearl. Um, then I've got my findings laying out here. I'm going to go ahead and just get enough for my bracelet so I'll need one of my lobster claws, one of my jump rings, two of my bead caps, and then two of the wire guardians. And the rest of this stuff I'm going to go ahead and put away for now. Um, a couple of other things you're going to also need for today's project are some Hypogee cement. Um, you can use E6000 or another type. I particularly like this one because of the tip. It allows you to pinpoint exactly where you're going to put that cement. And we'll, we'll need that to secure a couple of our knots one at the beginning of the project when we start, and then again one at the end when we're getting ready to end our thread. You're going to need some scissors or clippers or something to cut your thread with. And you're also going to, I'm going to show you how I use uh, the tweezer method. I do mine just a little bit differently than on the videos I found on YouTube. But here's an important point I want to make about these tweezers. You'll see this is actually a pair I also use for soldering. I just took some steel wool and clean the tips off really good so nothing gets on my thread. But I want you to pay attention to how finely pointed these tweezers are. And they work out really, really well. Now this is a pair that I bought while I was down at my daughter's for the last couple of weeks. Um, and I wound up getting down there without having my tweezers with me and I was trying to, going to try to work on my daughter's necklace. But what happened was I wound up having to wait till I got home, and I'm going to show you the reason why. If the only tweezers I could find to buy uh, 
beading tweezers or jewelry tweezers I found in this set over at Michael's, which it's a really good set. I'm not knocking the pliers or the tweezers at all. I got this great little set right here for about six bucks. It came with a little pair of locking tweezers, like I've shown you in some of my soldering videos. It had this really cool little pair of bent nose tweezers, which I'm sure I will be able to use in working with my metal. And it also came with this adorable little set of these little flat paddle end tweezers. And it was a really nice little set. And like I said, I'm not disappointed that I bought the set at all. The problem I was having is the difference in these tips of these tweezers when I went to try to tie the pearl knots. And you can see right here the difference on the side of the thickness of the tip of these tweezers. I, particularly for myself, was struggling to be able to get my pearl knots close enough to the bead so that I didn't have a gap in the thread. And I tried a couple, two or three times, and I got so frustrated that I, finally I stopped and I decided to wait till I got home to finish my daughter, to do my daughter's necklace and to start um, Katie's as well because I only had a limited amount of my silk thread to work with and I was um, afraid that if I kept cutting away the mistakes and starting over, I was not going to have enough to finish the project of the right size of silk thread. So I waited till I got home and as you can tell from this necklace, it was worth it for me to wait. It took, took me about two or three hours to make this necklace um, hand knotting the pearls and that's about you know uh, and this 18 inch necklace so that's a good you know piece of information for you about how long it'll take you to do your project um, I'm going to be doing the bracelet in this project so it won't take us nearly as long um, so let's go ahead and let me clear this away and we'll get started and I'll talk to you a little bit more about this thread all right so I'm back and I've cleaned up all of my work area here so that I have a nice place to work and I'm getting ready to um, unwind my silk thread from the spool that it comes on. So here's the little bent wire needle down here on this end. So I'm going to go ahead and take the needle off the packaging first and you can see that it, when you pull it off it's a little bit bent and we can straighten that up here just in a few minutes and I'll show you guys how to do that. But I want to go ahead and get all of my silk off of this cord, I mean off of this card. So I'm just going to go ahead and start unwinding it and to keep going until I get every bit of it off of the card. And if you can see by looking at it how it comes off the card and it's uh, you know pretty goofy up here because it's been on this card for who knows how long. So what we're going to do once we get all of the thread off is we're going to stretch it. And to do this, we're going to start at the tail end here where there's no needle. And we're just going to start pulling it just like this. And we're just going to keep working a little at a time until we've got this cord stretched from one end up to the other. So just grip it in both hands like this and pull and stretch. Now when you get close to where your needle is, you don't want to just pull super hard right there. You want to grip the thread behind the needle. So here's the end. I'm going to take my finger and thumb and I'm going to grip right here behind this needle. And then I'm just going to pull backwards from it to the right. I don't want to pull super hard here or run the risk of pulling that little needle out. The needle is actually woven right into the thread. So. Once we've done that, then I'm going to just take it and I'm going to go back again. I'm going to start up here at the needle end and I'm just going to keep pulling through till I've pulled it all back through my hands again. Nice and stiff, just like that. And I'm going to just, oh, kind of burnt my finger a little bit and pulling too hard. So I just keep going until I get back down to the other end. And what that does is it pre-stretches the thread. So basically since it's silk it can stretch out over time due to the weight of the pearls and so if you pre-stretch the thread then that lessens the issue of you know it's stretching out worse rather quickly and causing gaps between your pearls all right so now that we've gotten that part done and we've stretched our thread what i'm going to do is i'm going to straighten my needle up just a little bit and to do that i'm just going to use these nylon jaw pliers I'm just going to pull on it just a little slightly like that. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. 
It just needs to be a little bit uh, nice and stiff here on the tip for when we have to pass through a pearls more than once. It needs to be a little bit stiff. And to start our project, um, that is exactly how we need to do. We need to string on a couple of pearls. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to string on two pearls. Just like that. And we're going to carry them down towards the tail thread of this um, silk thread. So I'm just going to pull and pull till I get down here towards my tail. And what I'm going to do to make sure that I don't run into a problem of my pearl sliding off is I'm going to tie one tiny little overhand knot down here at the bottom, just like that, and pull it. Then I'm going to bring these two pearls down and let them sit up against that knot, just like that. So now I want to get started with my project. I'm going to have to add one of my ends here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a bead cap and I'm holding it so that the dome side is facing upwards towards me. And I'm going to go ahead and put that on my needle. So then when it comes all the way down here against the bead, it sits correctly against the pearl like that. So now I'm going to pick up one of my wire guardians and I'm going to come up through. It doesn't matter which side, right or left. I'm going to come up through that and pull my thread mostly the way through. And then I'm going to take my little handy needle here and I'm going to come down the other side of my horseshoe guardian protector. And then I'm going to pull that thread through. And then I'm using this beautiful just um, the color is just regular gray of this uh, griffin thread. So now that I have my horseshoe protector down here, I'm going to bring it just a little closer to the pearls just like this. Let me zip it on in here a little bit. So you can see that I have a knot here, two pearls. I then have my bead cap, my wire guardian up one side and down the other. So I'm just going to go ahead and start with my uh, closed jump ring here on this end. So I'm just going to put my needle through it, and I'm going to let it slide on all the way down here, and let it sit inside of my wire guardian just like that. And once that's in position, then I'm going to come back through my bead cap. So I'm coming through the bead cap, and I'm going to go ahead and pull that all the way through and bring everything into position a little bit. <clears throat> so I've gotten everything pulled down and I just want to show you what I have so far. So I have my two pearls on, I have come up through the bead cap, up through one side of the horseshoe protector, down the other side, then through my jump ring and put that into position, then I've come back through this bead cap. So this is where I'm sitting right now. And I've left myself a little bit of a gap because now I need to take my needle and come through this pearl. So just take your time and work as slowly as you can to make sure that you can get that needle to go through the pearl without gumming up your needle too much. And if you run into a trouble a little bit, like I am right now, because I don't have enough of a gap, I'm going to pull this back out just a little bit, just to give myself a little more wiggle room between those two pearls. So I can get my needle through and then I'll have a space where I can grab the needle. So I'm just going to wiggle nice and slow and slowly push it through until there's enough poking out that I can either grab both my tweezers or my pliers. And once again, you might need to use your chain nose pliers to help you get that needle through that one bead. So now you can see that I have that little piece of needle poking through the pearl. So I can just take my pliers and I can use them to help me get this needle pulled back through my very first pearl. Nobody said this is going to be easy, guys, so you just have to take your time. And starting it is the hardest part. <laughs> um, Actually, I found it easier to end it than to start it. So now I've got to pull this through. And I've got to pull all of my silk through. And I'm going to pull nice and slow. Because I don't want to 
run the risk of creating a knot in my thread. So I'm just slowly pulling it through. Nice like that. And once it, if it starts bunching up on you out here on this end and twisting around, just take your fingers and unravel it until you can get it all the way through. You can see I'm just that just shows you exactly how this thread likes to twist even though I pre-stretched it. So I'm just taking my time till I get it all the way through. You can see right there, see the twist? And this is another reason why I decided uh, to show you guys my method of doing the knotting part because I'm having such trouble with this um, Griffin silk twisting on me like that. So I'm going to just keep going. I'm almost there. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep pulling it until my thread, I'm going to untwist right here. You see how I have a little bit of a twist there, and I want my two threads to pull through evenly at the same time. So you just have to play around with it until you get both of your threads pulled through and your bead cap is sitting in the right place. And you don't have any bunched up thread underneath your bead cap or on the top of it. Okay, so I had to do a little bit of finagling to get everything to position up nicely. And here, um, what I did was I had to pull on this cord just a little bit too in order to get everything to sit flush up against my pearl like that and not have any thread knotted up between the speed cap or the wire protector in my very first pearl. So there's what it looks like and it's on and everything looks great. Here's my working thread off to the left and here's my little bit of tail thread over here to the right. <clears throat> so I'm going to pull that bead down out of my way and the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over so I can make my knots easier is I'm just going to tie an overhand knot right here between my two pearls and I'm going to pull it down nice and tight just like that and of course it automatically snugs up right there against your pearl um, you know because we're working with two threads. So the next step is to pass through our very next pearl. So I'm getting my end with my needle on it. And I'm going to slide this towards the middle of this little piece of tail thread. And I'm going to take this needle and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to have to work it through till it pokes out a little bit on the other side of this second pearl. Just like that. And I'm not going to push really hard because I don't want to twist and bend my needle up. So then I'm just going to come in with my chain nose pliers again. And now I'm just going to pull my needle straight through, just like we did the first time around. And then we have to go through the same process of pulling our string all the way through without forming a knot. So once it start, tries to twist up or tangle up on you, stop, straighten it up, and then pull some more through. Just take your time until you get it all the way through. And... That's one thing I'm telling you I don't understand. Maybe it's because I'm left-handed, but I sure do have an awful lot of problem here with this griffin thread tangling on me and twisting on me. So I'm going to go ahead and pull mine through and I'll meet you back. So once you get your thread pulled through, what you want to do is take a close look in between these pearls and make sure that you don't have a lot of twisted up thread sitting in there that can work itself loose and create a gap between your pearls later on. So I'm just taking mine like this right here and just wiggling them around. Then I'm going to take my two pieces of thread down here and pull against them like this in opposite directions. Just to make sure those two pearls are situated up against that knot in the center. And so now that I'm here, um, I'm below my second pearl, I'm just going to tie another overhand knot just like this. And pull it nice and snug 
up against my second pearl. And this is where our GS cement comes in, or Hypo G cement, or whatever. I'm going to take my needle and lay it over to the side out of the way. And I'm going to open up my glue. And this is the GS Hypo cement. And it dries fairly quickly. But I like to put a piece of paper underneath it, just because I don't like to get the glue on my bead mat. So once it's open, you can see how it starts coming out the tip. I'm just going to take it and pinpoint my glue onto this knot. And I'm going to make sure that I get it, you know, just around only the knot and try not to get it on my pearl. I'm just going to set it down like that. And I'm going to let it dry for about 10 minutes. And once it's dry, I'll come back and we'll go on forward. All right, folks, so while my uh, hypo G cement is uh, curing here and drying just for a few minutes, I want to talk to you about other choices you can make for your findings on a similar project. Um, the video I watched when I wanted to learn how to do this so I could repair Katie's first necklace was by Spoilt Rotten Beads. And on the necklace she was making, she just used um, that bullion, or gimp is another name for it, um, here on the end. And she put that on her needle and then went through the loop of her clasp and came back through the top bead. And that's very pretty. Um, like I said at the beginning, though, I couldn't find any gold-filled bullion to order uh, red very easily so I decided to use the wire protectors and I decided to add a bead cap just for a special added special little touch here at the end um, you can use any type of clasp also that you want like for example I showed you on Samantha's I used a hook clasp and then for Katie's I'm using lobster claws and a jump ring but if you wanted to use a toggle clasp you would also have to have some kind of spacer beads to come off th this end here above your pearl especially for the bar end of your clasp, which has to have room between the pearl and the end of the toggle so that it can come up through the toggle clasp on the other side and then settle into place to hold the bracelet or necklace together. So that if you want to use a toggle, keep in mind you'll have to have some kind of little spacer beads between this pearl and the ends of your or the loops of your clasp. So now I'm back and my glue has set up pretty good and I can go ahead and take my scissors or a pair of cutters, whichever, and just simply cut your tail thread off of that knot right there, making sure that you don't cut through the working end of your thread at the same time. And once you have all that done, you can go ahead and take your pliers and your scissors and everything that's in your way and get it out of your way because you won't need them again until we get ready to add this up uh, the other portion of our clasp at the end so I'm going to go ahead and get all these things out of my way the only thing that you're going to need for working on the length of your project are your tweezers and your pearls and a measuring tape or a ruler so that you can keep an eye on your length as you go along now this is where my tutorial gets a little bit different from other folks is most other folks videos that I have watched on pearl knotting tell you to go ahead and load all of the rest of your pearls for your project onto your thread at the say uh, at the start and like I said I don't know if it's me if I'm left-handed if I'm not stretching my core good enough or what but you saw the trouble I was having with the thread the silk thread twisting on me and I've found out that if I try loading all of my pearls on and it starts twisting up, then I run into the real problem of these all the pearls are on my thread and I can't straighten it. So I've chosen not to do it that way. I've chosen to do mine by adding one pearl at a time. So I've got my two knots here. I've got one between these two pearls and I've got one at the end of this. Pearl. I'm going to just put it on my thread and slide it all the way up here just like that. And this is why you're going to really want a clean workspace, folks, because this thread's really long, and you need a way to work with it so that you don't run the risk of tangling it up. So here's how I do it. I just make a little loop, and I bring all of my pearls through, just like this. And then I lay it back down before bringing the loop closed at all. 
you take your tweezers, and I'm left-handed, so I'm working from the left. I'm going through this loop that I just made. So see my tweezers underneath that loop. And then I grab the center thread right here, close to the, as close to that pearl as I can get it. And with these nice, sharp tip tweezers, you can get really close. And now I'm going to start pulling. Let me zoom in. And as I pull, I try to loop the loop around the upper side of my tweezers, like this. And then I start pulling nice and tight. And I tighten that knot up as close as I can get it to the very tip of these beautiful sharp tweezers. And then you can also use your thumbnail and push it in a little more. And once you have it up there, like that, take and grab the thread between your tweezers and pinch down and then just pull slightly. And that snugs that knot up right next to that pearl. So don't worry if you didn't get it that time because I'm going to show you several more times here and we're going to work on this length of bracelet. So now I'm ready to add my next pearl. So I'm just going to pick up a pearl and I'm going to put it on my needle. And I'm going to bring it all the way through just like I did before and snug it up here. I'm going to make a loop. Let me see out just a little. So to make a loop, all I'm doing is wrapping it around my thumb and coming around these fingers here. Then I'm just picking up, my fingers are still through that loop, I'm just picking up my strand and coming through. And when I come lay it down, I'm holding here so that that knot doesn't have a chance to slip and get too small for me to work with. So I'm coming through my loop and I'm going to grab that center thread here with the tips of these little tweezers. Then I'm going to start pulling slowly. You can see that I'm holding that loop down on the back side of my tweezers towards my bead strand there. And then I'm pulling nice and tight. I can use my thumb to help me as I go to pull my tweezers out to hold that knot into position. Then I take my tweezers and squeeze my thread and I just pull. Just like that. Let's do it again. And it seems like a lot of work, but I prefer to do it this way because, like I said, this thread twists on me, and it's uh, when I try it by loading all the pearls on, I wound up having to take them off, put them on, take them off, put them on. And that, to me, is more time-consuming and wasteful of my time. So here I am, and I have my next pearl slid into place. I'm taking my thread. Here's my strand down here. I'm coming across my thumb and around a couple of my fingers. I'm bringing it back over here to the crossover point and pinching it with my right hand. Then I'm reaching down with my left, and grabbing my pearls, bringing them through, and then I roll my loop towards myself so that that's what my knot or my loop section looks like. That gives me plenty of room. When I go to grab the center thread, if you'll notice, I catch it up here with my fingers and hold it. So I'm making sure that as I come up against that pearl, that pearl is up against my previous knot. Then when I start to pull, I make sure that that little loop is laying on the back side of my tweezers closest to my pearl as I can get it. And I start pulling in and just working my little knot with my thumb as I pull my tweezers out, just like that. And sometimes your tweezers get a little sticky, but whatever. Then I just come with my tweezers, grab into that thread, and pull it with my right hand as I squeeze with my left. And if you'll notice how nice the knots get up against each other, and I don't have any gaps of thread in between. I'll show you a couple more. I'm going to zoom out for this. And then you guys can go off, and we'll come back and talk about the length here in just a few minutes. But let's do one more. Going through my pearl. And carrying it all the way up. Right into possession. I'm making my little loop and grabbing it. Then I'm grabbing my pearls and bringing them through and laying my knot down, my loop down like so. And pick up my tweezers and come through my loop and pinch up here as close to the pearl 
make sure it's snug up against the knot before and then slowly just pull that knot in and you can also do this process with other beads besides pearls so now that I've gotten that pearl on I want to talk about measuring your bracelet so I've gotten out my long ruler just because it's easier to see and what I've done here is I've laid my lobster claw down and I've laid down my horseshoe protector my bead cap is going to be sitting flush up against one of my pearls and so the amount of difference it's going to add is not going to be very much I mean it might be within a few millimeters or something but I'm not going to take it into account when I'm looking at how long I want to make my bracelet so she wants an 8 inch bracelet this comes out to 3 quarters of an inch this portion here that I know I have to add on my other end so that's 3 quarters of an inch when I lay my work down onto my ruler I'm going to measure my uh, bead work from about the center of this jump ring here on this end so when I lay that down with the center on the edge I already have like three and a half inches so three and a half inches plus three quarters of an inch makes four and a quarter inches so that's what I have so far so when I get up to close to the eight mark which is down here I want to stop three quarters of an inch back this way so here's the eight inches that I need so if I were to lay my lobster claw and my horseshoe protector on this end and take away that three quarters of an inch I know I need to work until my bead work comes to seven and a quarter inches so that's what I'm going to do and I'll lay my findings back out of my way you know and I keep adding my pearls until this strand equals seven and a quarter inches and then I'll meet you back and I'll show you how to end it up um, one thing I forgot to mention when we talked about measuring the bracelet is that when you're getting close to the end like I said I needed to go up to seven and a quarter inches so I'm going to need to stop tying my pearls on for the last two so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep measuring and when I get to about I'm going to lay these at seven and a quarter so when I get to, to the pearl that falls here which is right around the six and a half ish mark or somewhere in there that's when you're going to want to stop and do not tie knots between your last pearls and that um, we do that as we add the final uh, clasp band and I'll show you more about it when we get to that point so now I'm just going to go ahead and finish my length and I will meet you back just shy of the two pearls and the clasp at the end all right so I'm going to wanted to show you guys how things are looking here on my ruler so I've got my end here approximately in the middle of this jump ring and my beadwork is coming up to about six and a half exactly with my last knot I went ahead and put these other two pearls on just so I can show you what I'm talking about and you'll have to do the same thing too when you get ready to end your beadwork if I slide those down up, up against the beadwork like so and I put my clasp into position that's going to put me pretty much exactly at eight inches right there and that's not accounting for a small knot that's going to be in between these two pearls so I'm pretty well sure that this is where I want to be with my particular length so that is how you can measure and determine how many pearls you want to add on here at the end I could give it another pearl but that's going to add you know quite a bit of measurement to this bracelet it's going to be three eighths of an inch longer so I'm going to stop right here where I am and I'm going to show you guys how we go about um, securing the beadwork and adding the other end of our clasp and before I get into showing you how to end off the beadwork you might be wondering why I have this little dangle of thread hanging here well I want to make sure that you understand what exactly happened when I put my Hypo G cement on the knot initially for this bracelet and I let it dry for a little bit and then I went ahead and cut the tail off what happened was obviously my glue was not secure and it wound up uh, pulling loose on the knot and it created a huge gap here between the second and third pearls on the starting end of my bracelet so what I had to do was cut everything off and I had to start over so 
because of trying to do a video here, what I decided to do this time was I went ahead and started over and I applied my Hypo G cement glue in here, but I decided to leave the tail thread on uh, and I'm not going to cut it off until I've let this bracelet sit overnight, which is when I made Samantha's necklace, I allowed that to sit overnight before I cut the tail thread off and continued on stringing the rest of the pearls onto this necklace. So that's just in case you were wondering why, where this magical tail thread came from. But now we're going to talk about how to finish up. So I've tied my knot here behind this bead, just like I normally would. And then I went ahead and put my last two pearls onto my string. And now that I have those on, we're going to work on securing this beadwork and adding the other end of our um, findings here. So the first thing I have to do is just like we did on the other end, is go ahead and put the bead cap on. Make sure that you face the dome side towards the pearl. Slide that on down into position just like that. And then you can use your GIMP or your, um, what I'm using is a wire protector, a wire guardian. So now it's going to come on up through one side. It doesn't matter which. I'm going to carry that down towards my beadwork here. And then I'm going to come through the other side of the wire guardian with my needle. You know, I also meant to tell you, if your needle starts getting a little really bent towards the end, you can take your wire snippers and snip away a little bit of the bent portions until, uh, you know, you can have a straight enough needle to get through the pearls. And I still have a necklace to make with this piece of thread, so um, I had to snip a little bit off. But you can see how the kinks form here. And if it gets too kinked, it won't go through the pearls. All right, so now I'll come through both sides of my wire protector. And now I'm going to come through my the little loop, soldered closed loop, on my lobster claw. When I bring that down, I want to make sure it falls down into the wire protector. Just like that. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We have to come back through our bead cap first. So I'm going to go ahead and take my needle. And if you're not using a bead cap, you would just simply come back through the pearl. But because I'm using a bead cap, I've got to come through there. So once I get my needle into the hole, I'm going to pull it with my other hand. And pull my silk all the way through. And I'm going to pull nice and slow, just like we did when we started, so that we don't form any knots in our silk as we work. I know it's a little tedious, but it's better than getting a knot here at the end of our project, and we would have to cut our thread and start all the way over. And we don't want to do that. So now that I'm pulling down, I'm going to have to hold on to my clasp and try to pull my bead cap down close to my beadwork and my wire guardian. So I'm just going to fidget with mine until I get everything pulled down secure. And I'll come right back and show you guys what it looks like. So now I've got everything snug back down, and like I showed you before, I have come through the bead cap, went up through my wire guardian, came down through my wire guardian, and went through my lobster claw, put that where it belongs, and then came back down through the bead cap. So now, as you remember, we have a knot here between speed pearl 3 and pearl 2. Where we need a knot is here, between these two pearls. So uh, sitting here underneath the bead cap, and what I have to do is pass through that pearl. So I'm going to have to come, I'm going to give myself a little wiggle, wiggle room. And this is the part that's really fidgety, trying to get back through your pearl. And I recommend that you go ahead and use your chain nose pliers once you get a little piece of it into the bead hole. And work it nice and slowly until you can get through that pearl and then you can grab it with your chain nose pliers and I may have to pull my thread out just a little bit just like I did before give myself a little more play then I can snug it back through when I get in through the pearl so let me give myself a little bit more wiggle room here I'll just loosen my thread up a little bit So now I'm going to come through this one pearl. So I've got my needle in, into the pearl. I'm going to take these chain nose pliers 
and I'm going to work it gently until I can get the needle through to where I can grab it. And it feels like it's almost there. I just have to check and see if I can find a place to grab. I'm not through enough yet, so I'm going to have to keep working at it. And just take your time. I know it seems um, like it's really hard, and it is a little bit wiggly and a little bit difficult to do. And what you don't want to do is what I just did, is kink your needle up real bad. So you take your time and go slow till you can just get enough to grab here on this side. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but you can see there. there's a little piece of my needle poking up. So I finally got it through there. I did have to take my needle out and straighten it with my nylon jaw pliers just a little bit to be able to pull it on through just like, you know, we did at the other end of our project. And so once you get down there and get everything, get your needle pulled through, then you'll want to pull the thread through and tighten everything up. So I'm ha having trouble getting all the way through my pearl here. What I don't want to do is break my thread. So I'm just going to keep going gently. There we go. So now I'm through. And now that I think about it, maybe I should have chosen like a size 5 silk or a 4. But too late now because I'm already using the 6. It might have made it just a little easier to get this thread through the second time. But you live and you learn. And you can tell that I'm doing the same thing I did before. I'm taking my time, making sure that I don't knot my silk as it twists and tangles like that. And I just go ahead and untangle it and then pull a little bit through slowly at a time. I don't guess it's this pearl knotting is for everyone, but I kind of like the rhythm of it. It just is, really has a nice, peaceful, calming motion to it. So I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get my thread pulled through a little at a time. Because like I said, the worst thing that you can do here would be to rush it and break your thread. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get everything worked into place and come back and show you guys how to fix this up. So as you can see, it takes a little finagling to get this last piece done. But what you're looking for is this. So here is my last knot I tied uh, after this uh, whatever number bead this is. So it would be three down from this clasp. These two don't have a knot between them yet. So the last knot I tied is here. You want to make sure that that second to last pearl you picked up is sitting firmly up against the knot. As you pull this all into position, that's the one thing you want to make sure of, that there's no gap here between where your last knot is and that second to last pearl. So I've got a little bit more finagling to do to make sure that mine is nice and snug. And then I'm going to come back, and what we're going to do is we're just going to tie a knot right here. Actually, I think I'm in a pretty good position, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a loop and make a knot right here. I'm going to drop my beads right down into that loop. But when I pull it up, I want to make sure it's sitting between the second to the last pearl and the last pearl right here. I'm going to hold this second to the last pearl down up against that other knot. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this knot just like that. So now I have my knot in place. So I'm just going to come in here. With the very tip of this Hypo G cement, and I'm going to go really gently on both sides of my knot. And I'm going to try my best not to get glue onto my pearl. But if I do, it's not that stressful because it does come right off. You can get the glue off after it dries off the pearl pretty easy. But now that I have the glue sitting in there, just like I wanted on the knot, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this thread. But I'm going to leave a tail on it. Because... Like I said, I want to let this set overnight. And I suggest that if you if you have the time and you can, then you would want to let your glue sit for a pretty good while till it dries. The, um, the box that came in said 10 minutes, but after 10 minutes, um, my knot had, not, had worked loose because the glue did not dry completely. But anyhow, sands the few little tail threads. 
It came out really beautiful, and I think that Katie's going to love it. And um, I hope you love yours, too. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this over to dry, and I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same process and make Katie's necklace using the remainder of the pearls. Um, sands the two I'm going to use um, for her earrings. And I'm going to keep working on it until I have a 19-inch necklace made in the same fashion. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you like this, um, my approach to pearl knotting. If you have trouble doing um, the method where you string all your pearls on at once, you can try this, this approach here and see if it works out a little bit better for you. All you lefties out there, I hope that you um, find it easier to work with this thread that tends to twist really bad on us lefty girls. All right, have a great day. Thanks for watching.